athletes from the very beginning level of competition, level one, level two, all the way up through elite. They have turns on the floor and on the beam. Some people call them pirouettes. In gymnastics terms, we just call them the turn. It's a requirement that each gymnast, regardless whether they're in the JO program or they're in the Excel program, they have to have a turn element. And the turn is usually a make it or break it skill. We're gonna talk about drills and lead ups for the turn. First of all, let me just, for those of you that don't understand what I'm talking about, and I'm using some sort of Greek language here, let me talk, show you what a turn is. This is just a full turn, all right? So that's a full turn. But in the lower levels, they only need to have half turns. And I don't recommend that gymnasts move on to the full turn until they have the half turn and the three quarter turn. But we're gonna talk about the requirements for a turn. The first basic, and I have a box here, and you can do this next to a counter, you can have something that you, a wall, anything for them to hold on to, but that they have their feet stacked. We call this beam feet in our gym. Some people have their feet this way on the balance beam, but I would prefer this way. And as they go up onto releve, they're pushing up through their ankles, they're squeezing their inner thighs, they're squeezing their legs, they're squeezing their glutes, their stomach's tight, their knees are locked, their ankles are pushed, and their calf muscles are engaged. Now, they go to a go to a wall. When you do this, be sure that there is a straight line that goes from the ball of the foot all the way up to the knee. That has to be a straight line. If the heel is down that way and there's an angle in the ankle, their turns, they're not gonna be successful in their turns. They may, like I said, they may get lucky and they may be able to do the half turn this way, even the full turn this way. They will not be able to do anything past a full turn or usually stay on the beam if they're doing on the beam this way. So that ankle has to be pushed all the way up. We call that a forced arch. You'll see, you'll hear the kids talk about forced arch. Okay, push up all the way, lock out that knee. I'm gonna move this leg out of your way so you can see it. So that knee is locked out. That's how you need to be in your relevant. So while you're balancing against a, with a wall or a box or anything that you have a chair, have the child pull their stomach in so their belly button is trying to touch their spine. Pull up onto releve and hold. And then go back down. Next, press the arms out to the side. The hands should be straight out to the side, if not a little bit behind their shoulders. Their palms are pushed back. We always tell the kids to make the number four so their thumbs are in. Out. We don't typically like to see their thumbs out. So thumbs in, press the arms out to the side, squeeze the stomach, tuck the glutes under, and lift. You want to make sure that your shoulders are pressed down and your neck is nice and long. And then just keep going back down. Again, your goal is to make a straight line from the top of your head all the way down to your releve. And then if you can do it, try to do it with your arm over your head in a high crown or fifth position. Go up on the releve, squeeze and hold, take it back down. Now as we do this, a lot of the kids in their, in their uh, crown position, their elbows start to bend and they end up looking more like this. So I recommend you tell their, your child to touch the fingers over top of the head with straight elbows. That will cause just a tiny bit of an arc in the arm and that's the position that we want. We want the hands over top of the head because we want everything over top of the balance beam. So while they're on the balance beam, you want everything stacked over top of it. If they start to do this, what happens to the elbows? The elbows go out to the side, they start tilting. Or they do this and they start tilting. So it's just really important that the body stacks correctly. Again, really, really important that the legs stay straight and that the quad is locked. The leg is squeezing tight, the knee is tight. Going up onto releve, holding and taking it back down. Do that a few times, switch feet. I think it's always good for the kids to have equal strength on both sides. Up to releve, hold and back down. The next step is that they have to do that on one foot. So have them use a wall, point the toe to the knee. Now as they're doing this, it's really important, 
Watch my hip level. So here's my hips nice and flat. As I lift my foot up, my hip level didn't change. I didn't lift up this way, I didn't poke out that way. The hips have to stay flat and level. Then they can take it up to releve and back down. And up to releve and back down. They can do it on both sides. They can do it holding a wall. They can do it without holding a wall. That's up to you. The last drill is to take, I use a slider. You can use a magazine or a book, right? These things are great. So first of all, put it on the leg, right? We always tell the kids, if you have a, a, a pizza pie, don't let your pizza pie fall off your leg as you go up onto releve and back down. So they can do it there. You could put the pizza pie on your head and do the same thing. And if you want to get really tricky, you put one pizza pie on your head and one pizza pie on your leg and now do the same drill up and down. After you do all those drills, and you should always do both sides, one side is going to be stronger than the other. We have dominant sides. Whatever leg they put in front for their cartwheel, their round off, their handstand, that's what the leg that they prefer. That's typically their dominant leg. There are some kids that really don't care which leg they put in front. I am a right-handed, but I'm a lefty in gymnastics. So my left leg is dominant. It really just depends on each kid. Have them do a cartwheel. Figure out which leg they put in front. That's their dominant leg. It's the other foot that comes up to the knee. So as I'm a lefty, this is how I would prepare. This is how my turn would be. If you're a righty, your right foot's in front. That meaning righty and cartwheel. Righty and round off, not righty and righty. Your other knee, your left knee would come up. Now is the preparation. The preparation for these turns starts with your dominant leg out in front. Your leg is tight and it is very, very straight. It stays straight as you rock up onto releve. One arm is out to the side. The same leg's hand is in front of you. I tell the kids it's like hugging a big tree, right? Again, we don't want this. It's not a small tree. And we don't want their arms straight. So it's that half circle, third position, shoulders relaxed, neck nice and long, stomach in, bottom tight, preparation. Now just go up to releve, touch the fingertips over the head, and then step forward and finish. Notice that as I step forward, my foot is turned out. You will see kids that as they step forward, they'll do that. This is gonna be a real big problem on balance speed. So make sure that their foot is turned out and they finish in a point lock position with their hands pressed behind their shoulders. Chin lifted, chest pressed out. Okay, so it's prepare, tight leg, tight ankle. Touch the fingertips over the head with straight arms. Passe, step, finish. If they can do that, they're ready to start turning. To start, you go through that same thing, except this time do it flat foot, not on releve. Go prepare up to passe. Touch those hands, and then you're gonna do quarter turns. Your arms are gonna drop down to horizontal, come back up, quarter turn. Drop to horizontal, quarter turn. Drop to horizontal, quarter turn. One more, step forward, finish. If they do a turn and they step backward, it's a very large deduction. So make sure that they step forward and turn and to finish. Now in order to get them to turn, you have to concentrate on moving the heel. That's what you wanna focus them on. If they're nice and tight and they're very tall and there's a straight line going from their fingertip down their back, through their glute, leg, down all the way to the heel, all they have to concentrate on doing is turning that heel. And you'll get all the way around. If the heel doesn't turn, they're gonna wobble, their ankles are gonna twist, and it's gonna be weird, okay? And again, I recommend you try it going both directions. It's very important to be strong on both sides. Plus, if you can do it good on your bad side, 
makes your dominant side even better. So then the last part of the turn is actually doing the half turn. So I have my left leg in front. I'm a lefty. I'm going to bring my right knee up, but I'm going to turn to the left. So that's the direction you want to go. Sometimes in that preparation, I tell the kids to follow the arm that opens up, right? So that's the way they're going. It's kind of like your hitchhike, right? So here we've got our nice tight leg, our pushed up ankle, our good posture, back is straight. I'm going to turn to the left in a half turn, step, finish. Okay, you can do the same thing. Once you get it on the floor, if you have a tape line, you can use a tape line. If you have, we call these noodle beans, noodle beans, you can ask your dad to make you a beam. Dads, make sure it's four inches wide and that it's sanded and that there's carpet around it, okay? So, here's my balance beam. I'm getting ready to do my turn. My leg is tight, my shoulders are pressed down, my neck is long, I do my turn, and I finish. Now, where should the kids be looking? Not all around. They look at that end of the balance beam, roughly three to four feet in front of them, and down. Their chin is up, but they're still looking down. Then they're gonna spot that end of the balance beam as they come out of it. There's the turn, spot, and finish, okay? That is the half turn. It needs to be done on the floor. It needs to be done on the beam. It needs to be done on both legs. I want you guys to practice them. It's so important. I know it's not exciting, but they're so important to have. And I hope that you continue to practice. In my next video, we will talk about the full turn. So if you've mastered the half turn, it's time to go on to the full turn. Thanks you guys. Take care, stay safe.